Hello guys, it's me Asic Hydra here today bringing you another Warhammer Martyr video. What the developers have said to us so far is they'd rather we didn't include too much in-game footage on YouTube for the first couple of weeks whilst they just get a few elements of the game rolling out. I'm going to respect their wishes, but what I am going to do, I'm going to go through their roadmap with you. Having looked at most of the information available and listened to all of the interviews I've heard, hopefully what I can do is elaborate on a couple of the things they're going to release so you can know what to sort of expect from them, what the devs are hoping to release, give you guys a little bit more of a breakdown, see what's going on. So what we know, this game is going to be released, or they're aiming to release it, in the third quarter of this year. And we have three major chunks of this alpha test, which will eventually become a beta. This then is broken down into subsections of what we will presume shall be weekly patches, which is pretty quick in terms of sort of throwing content at us. But I really like a phased approach. It means you can actually test each feature nice and methodically and see what works. So starting off, we've got the alpha build, which is what we've got at the moment, which is just a limited bunch of missions. Um, one character we can get started, have a run around and see what we think of the core gameplay. See what sort of general game breaking bugs there are, try and iron those out. So next week or next patch is going to be the star map. We already have some access to the star map so I feel like they might have introduced some of this already. But the more important and major thing will be the ARPG maps. These will be the randomly generated maps which they've boasted will be uh, based on 8 to 10 environments with 1 to 3 subsettings. So that, that is a huge amount of versatility in terms of maps. We don't know what planetary systems they'll be looking at, but I think it's safe to say you can expect a variety of slimy to hot to cold to indoor, outdoor. Map variety does make for a big difference in terms of grinding enemies. So already pretty excited about that and once again I'll emphasize the fact that these maps are going to be randomly generated which is a really damn cool feature. Then we've got a little bit of background on the Crusader. We don't really need to go into that. He's a Crusader. We know what we're doing. We're going out and inquisiting stuff. Now we're going to be expanding the open world in the next one and we're going to be including investigations. These are sort of submissions and subplots which are kind of exciting. Uh, you can go off and do basically micro campaigns, which will be a series of missions with given objectives. We don't know what the rewards will be, but it's pretty damn exciting. I think from memory that these will be um, co-op enabled, so pretty cool. Now, mission crafting. Really, really cool feature. If you've played Path of Exile, you can gather components... I'm not sure what system these guys are going to use, but you can basically choose what type of mission you want to do, where you want to do it, what you want to be against, provided you have the right materials, which is really cool. Really cool. It means you can try and set yourself new challenges, do sort of increased difficulties at different things, and try and really make it rough for yourself. And the rougher it is, the better the the better the rewards. So it's a really cool feature. Really, really excited for that. So the next thing we've got coming up, is the protectors. So I think this is a form of a sort of progression where we'll have certain rewards along the way for completing um, certain objectives. So these charts I have a feeling will work a little bit like a uh, reputation system or some form of uh, veterinary point system which will add to your sort of characters hopefully uniqueness. Now basic crafting functions. That's really damn cool. We don't know what you can craft in this game, although we already know there's a really good variety of weapons, there's a good variety of armor, and it's got a traditional sort of MMO and ARPG sort of loot and character item system. You have belts, helmets, armors, that sort of thing. So there's going to be lots of room for crafting. This should be a pretty cool thing. One would presume we'll go out and collect materials and not in a typical grinding MMO sense, but in a case of, oh, I've, I don't know, killed a dreadnought and taken his left bollock. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll turn that into a nice new helmet. Something like that. Who knows? Who knows? But really, really exciting. Skill crafting, really cool. So the inoculator is essentially your potion 
and as you will remember from a lot of other ARPGs is potions can have unique properties to them and it looks like you'll be able to really fine-tune what your one has its healing buff um, or even skill modifications so it could be purely DPS boost or or maybe even specific to a certain build you want to make really cool feature really really cool nice to see they've thrown that in really looks like they're taking a lot of features from other ARPGs and throwing it in which is nice to see because ARPGs as a genre are quite successful if done right and if you take the core features they're quite hard to get completely wrong it's easy to make a bad RPG but ARPG but people will still play it and some people will still enjoy it so I think a lot of these things are nice and safe um, and should make the game pretty good so account leveling longest part of the progression that comes after reaching maximum character level so what you notice from all ARPGs once you've finished leveling your character you'll have an extra system of levels where you can increase your paragon veteran whatever you want to call it this will basically come with additional bonuses we don't know what it is if it's vanity if it's physical if it's in terms of uh, overall account stats we have no idea but it's nice that they've put that in it means you can also have multiple characters and there's normally some sort of cross character bonuses that will apply nice feature nice feature common to the ARPG series nice to have though next we're going to go on to perks so essentially I've had a little look through the trees because these are already in game we don't know if they're going to change but it's fairly standard but there's quite a few different trees what you'll have in your average MMO is let's say three subclass uh, ability trees I think that's what WoW's going with whereas we have quite a lot of different choice here but they have less branches so you can choose to specialize in damage tankiness dot uh, the application of debuffs lots of different things and one would presume you'll only have X amount of points to do them all so you can try and create a unique build. That's going to be really, really nice system. Super hype for that. Third milestone. So this should be coming up around month number three, which is a shame because the Assassin is really who I want to play. But really excited. Assassin looks awesome. It's going to be your squishy damage dealer. They do mention stealth, which is cool, which is kind of exciting. Not a bad thing because there isn't going to be direct PvP and stealth can be a real annoyance in PvP games. But stealth, cool. And cabals, which are guilds, essentially. It's going to be join up with your mates, assign people ranks that are offensive to them. You can be the leader, you will gain XP and one would presume that you get some form of perks or you grind or get a reputation or something like that. I imagine they'll stick with the fairly standard sort of guild settings you'll see within most games. Now, special star map locations, don't know much more about that, but sounds kind of cool. Sounds kind of cool. Not much more to say there. We'll just wait and see what they do. Uh, Puritan and Radical Factions. So we already know that there's going to be more factions and enemy types added to the game. Currently we're faced with Nurgle and World Eater. They do look nice and unique, which is nice. They've done a really good job with the skins and such. Looking very pretty. That, again, more enemies the better. We also know, because they have said this, that the Dark Elder will be in here I think before release and eventually they want to include a lot more I even heard in an interview one of the developers mention the word orc however there's no mention of them in game yet we'll just have to wait and see so then finally last month before release we're looking at fortress building they've not given too much away here all we know is you're going to make a hideout and you're going to be able to hide stuff in it and other people will be able to attack it you can level yours up although when you're attacked you will not be there to defend it this is not direct pvp this is base defense okay i have a feeling but i'm completely speculating here this will work a bit like a turret defense game where you can say well i'm going to put my defenses here here and here and i'm going to do this this and this to make it harder to get in and we'll see who can attack me and take my stuff. I hope it's not like Clash of Clans, but I, I'm sure they'll do something good with it. But it's a really interesting system. Um, really, really potentially cool. Uh, nice, nice to throw in, I think. Nice to throw in, provided it doesn't get too frustrating for people. Now, Imperial Rebels, kind of cool, kind of cool. There's going to be vehicles, so perhaps 
around the Imperial Rebels, we might start seeing some tanks. I mean, we've seen Dreadnoughts already, obviously, but uh, I wonder if we'll be seeing other Land Raider, Rhino... Um, kind of hard to say with the size of the map so far. I feel like those vehicles might be a little bit clustered. I mean, a Land Raider would take up an entire goddamn corridor. We'll just have to wait and see. And the what else? Well, the what else indeed. We'll just have to wait and see. They have mentioned, and I'm just going to throw this in, they want to test a direct PvP mode in the final game, but it might not work. We all remember what happened with Diablo, the PvP and that. I tried it anyway, but it didn't last. I didn't like it. don't think anyone I knew liked it, but we'll just have to wait and see. But in summary, roadmap looks really cool. Week to week, we're going to get each time, you know, some new bits to play with. And each month we're going to get a large chunk to play with. As they've said, they're going to trickle it out. It looks really good. In particular, I am probably most looking forward to the randomly generated missions and finally being able to play my goddamn assassin. They've also not mentioned when the Psyker is coming out, the third hero. We'll just have to wait and see. It'll be somewhere, so uh, yeah, we'll just find out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it of some use. I will catch you soon with another video on more gameplay stuff, hopefully. We'll just have to wait and see. Peace out, guys. Much love.